It's my great pleasure to introduce to you today's speaker. It's uh, Wojtek Gorecki from uh, Faculty of Physics, University of Warsaw. Wojtek is a PhD student of uh, Rafał Demkowicz Dobrzański. And I guess Wojtek uh, specializes in quantum meteorology and estimation. Uh, and today, hopefully, I'm not wrong, but I, I guess that we are working with Rafael, so that must be it. So, and today, Vertex will be telling us about real and apparent ga games of simultaneous measurement, uh, measurements of phases or sim simultaneous estimations that uh, of, yeah, some of real and apparent games that you can get when you do simultaneous estimation of phases. Yeah. Uh, thanks. Thank you for the invitation and for this introduction. So today I want to indeed talk what advantage we can take from measuring many phases jointly instead of measuring, measuring them separately. And especially I want to stress uh, what uh, um, ambiguities arises when we try to analyze this problem only uh, with using uh, quantum fisher information and what it, why it is not sufficient tool and we need something more. So before giving any technical details, I just want to uh, briefly summarize what are potential problem with trying to analyze this uh, with artificial information. Okay, let me start with the simplest example of estimation, which is the estimation of the phase shift in the interferometer. So in the standard form, we put the Gaussian state into input. It goes from the Higgs Peter. The, then the phases is encoding. And we put another Higgs Peter. And we have two uh, photon counting devices. And based on the number of the photons count in each of them, we want to, we try to estimate the value of these unknown phases. Uh, and in a typical classical situation, when this light is uh, just uh, Incoherent the state of light due to possible fluctuation of text counts. The precision of uh, the such measurement is limited by a short noise limit. So the variance of the uh, estimator is bigger than the inverse of uh, the mean, uh, mean value of the atom used in the experiment. And we know that in general, using proper quantum and time state, it can be do, uh, can be done better. Uh, so we can generalize this problem uh, to the situation that we prepare at the input uh, arbitrary quantum state, then it goes through this interferometer, and we perform arbitrary measurement on the outcome. It gives us the probability of given outcome as trace of uh, proper operator with uh, density matrix. And we want now to assign to the result of the measurement estimator, which in general, we would like to give our give uh, back the true value of the parameter independently what it is. Of course, it uh, will be not strictly possible, but maybe later we formalize uh, more precisely what we mean by this condition. And our uh, aim is to minimize the variance of the estimator when the minimization is performed over the initial state, the chosen measurement, and uh, the, estimate, the function of estimator. So typically, we use the quantum Kramer band based on the quantum Fisher information. And quantum Fisher information is the function of the state and its derivative. So uh, in such formulation, the minimization over measurement and, uh, and estimator is not needed to, to be done. The quantum Kramer band tells us that the variance of estimator is always uh, bigger or equal than inverse of this quantum information divided by the number of repetition of the measurement. And it is guaranteed to be saturable in the limit of a large number of repetition, which comes from the central limit theorem. 
so for example, if we restrict to the n photonic states, then it turns out that the quantum pressure information has the maximum value the square number square number of these atoms, which is achieved for the famous null state, which is superposition of uh, equal equal weight superposition of the uh, situation when all photons go through the lower or upper arm. And in this uh, situation, the mean va the variance of the estimator is one over number of repetition times square of number of photons. So we achieve Heisenberg scaling, which is quadratic scaling with the atoms used in and repetition, which is better than a standard uh, not choice link. Okay, and now we want to uh, consider the situation when we um, want to have the problem when we have a p arm this interferometer and there are p unknown phases to measure and we want to compare the two situations the one when we just uh, choose some big initial state uh, best for measuring uh, all of them simultaneously with the situation when we uh, prepare p different uh, states each designed the to measure only one of these phases when globally we want to spend the same totally the same uh, amount of photons in both cases to make this comparison uh, fair in some sense uh, so in the situation when we want to have uh, when we want to measure all phases jointly when we use this again this camera band coming from the quantitative information we it can be easily done analytically so at the end we have the formula like this when for the big if the number of phases is big uh, the total cost scales quadratically with the number of phases and inverse with the number of photons and, and of course still linearly with the number of repetition so now we want to thought what happened when we want to measure these phases uh, separately? Well, Wojtek, just a quick question. So this uh, this last bound that you gave, uh, is it still saturable? I guess it is. In the limit of large number of repetition, yes. Uh, so now if you want to measure the phases separately, so we want to spend the same amount of resources so we need to divide the resources between single phase so one can say that okay so now instead of using n photons for measuring everything i use n divided by p photons for each phase uh, still i have k, k, k repetition and uh, from this sum we have uh, Total cost is sum of p uh, variances. So, at the end, uh, the total, the total, uh, the sum of variances case like the third power of the p. So, in this approach, one would say that uh, it is indeed strong uh, advantage in measuring jointly because there is different scaling with a number of phases we want to measure. But in fact, if we know that the quantum Kramer raw band is only saturable in the limit of large K, and that means that we repeat our measurement many, many, many times, so maybe it is much more reasonable not to divide the atom, the photons we use in each trial between phases, but maybe divide the number of repetition between uh, these phases, and in each trial still you uh, use and photons. And in such approach, uh, we see that because uh, the cost scale quadratically with number of uh, photons used in n trials and only linearly with the number of repetition, at the end we have the same scaling with number of the phases as in the joint measure. And okay, if we consider the situation when from some when when uh, from some reason the um, number of uh, photons we can use in single trial is limited 
but we are free to repeat our experiment arbitrarily many times, then of course this is more reasonable solution. Um, but still one can ask, uh, what will be the difference if we say that only total number of uh, photons we use globally in whole experiment and whole repetition is limited. And then the situation is not clear because we see that, of course, we have this central limit theorem telling us that uh, in the limit of k going to infinity, everything works perfect. But we know that in this real situation, there is some um, finite value of k for which uh, all these inequality are good enough to use it. So it may happen that when we have this k for which indeed it is possible to measure with this precision, but when we divide this k by k, it will be too small. So one can argue that then we should rather compare this one with this one, but it is also not simple because in such reasoning, there is hidden assumption that there is one universal k for which uh, for any model, quantum Kramer raw would be saturated, which is not true because the number of repetition needed to saturate may depend on the peculiar model. And in fact, if we only restrict to using quantum picture information, it is impossible to say what is, what is relation between these two approaches and if we should uh, this, uh, compare this one with this or this, if the total number of amount of resources is limited. So uh, to sum up in this talk, we want to answer the question, what, the, what is the biggest possible advantage of measuring all uh, phases jointly versus separately for the same amount of total resources used in both scenario? And to do that, we need to introduce some uh, another mathematical tools. Uh, okay, so at first part of my talk, I would like to um, uh, remind some results about the Heisenberg limit in single phase estimation. And by Heisenberg limit, we exactly understood the situation when the some finite amount of resources is used in optimal way. Uh, and in the next, uh, next, uh, next part, I will apply and extend uh, the results for the case of the uh, many parameter estimation. Okay, so now let me formally introduce what is Kramer raw band and quantum tissue information. So in this case, uh, we care about the estimation only about some uh, fixed point. So we assume that from the very beginning, it is known that the value of uh, this phase is close to some given value. And we want to only measure some small deviation from this point. And to formalize it mathematically, we introduce the concept of local unbiasedness. So in general, we would like to our um, estimator to be globally unbiasedness, but to Translate it to um, this situation when the phase is much or less known. We have this equation, calculate the vertex derivative, and now we demand to these two equations to be uh, valid only in the point theta zero. So, okay, I want to introduce it and uh, explain because. At this point, it seems to work very good. But uh, next, we will see that there, this is the reason for some problem in the interpretation later. But okay, if we want, if we only want our uh, estimate to be locally unbiased, then we can introduce quantum tissue information and connect the grammar around the quality. And the quantum Fisher information is the function only of the states and is the first derivative. So it, from this formulation, it is also clear that we only care about this single point because we assume that everything when we 
and can be good approximated by further rate. Uh, okay, next, uh, when we want to uh, discuss about the opti uh, optimal way to measure some uh, phase in the interferometer on in general some quantum channel, then if this quantum channel is unitary and this parameter does multiply some generator uh, operator, it can be di calculated directly from definition that quantum pressure information is just uh, four times the uh, the, uh, the variance of uh, this generator. Uh, so it is clear that for our problem of single phase estimation, there's an n photonic state which maximizes the variance, this famous null state for which this variance is n square over four, uh, which was said before. But there are some problems with null state because we can see that when we put it in the interferometer and this phase arise, this state is unable to distinguish between two different phases, which differs by 2 pi divided by n. Uh, so as, as, the, um, as the result, the probabilities of any measurement outcomes oscillate very fast. So indeed, in every single point, we have very good precision because even very small changes of the phase give us the biggest changes of the measurement results. But on the other hand, the, the statistics are exactly the same when we shift it by 2p over n. So in fact, to use this uh, state to have the precision uh, of the order one over square of k time n, we need already know before the performing measurement, what is this value with accuracy of one over n. And that is the problem if arise with from applying only this local unbiasedness, uh, unbiasedness condition, because in fact, the region for uh, when, where this uh, state and measurement uh, works well, shrink with the number of photons we use. Uh, to understand it better, we can also think about uh, all this procedure in the context of information theory as uh, sending some information uh, by sending this state. So we think that we want to encode the estimation about phase on this state and then send it to someone else. And then one can see that the, this new state no matter uh, what is the exact value of the theta, belongs to the only two-dimensional um, subspace. So in fact, from the, from the mathematical point of view, it is only single qubit. So it is clear that there is impossible to encode much information on this. So if uh, we do not have many, many, many repetition, it is clear that it's rather stupid way to use n photon uh, for for such task okay so but still we can ask if this have any sense in any uh, other situation and yes because if we have uh, if we consider the situation when we have arbitrary large number of repetition then we think that we can at the beginning, spend some small number of this uh, repetition, for example, square root of k, to get the, this precision of order one over n, and then use the rest uh, to have this uh, accuracy you want to achieve. Uh, but if we want to discuss the situation when the total amount of resources is limited, in fact, it is not possible to go further using only uh, quantitative information and we need to um, introduce some another tool and this another tool could be a minimax approach when we discuss uh, the um, validity of such procedure in the follow in the uh, following way we assume the most pessimistic scenario so uh, for any 
for any given estimator to check its validity. We calculate this, it, uh, its uh, variance in the most pessimistic uh, point where it, uh, when it works uh, the worst. And as we want to compare these results with the result obtained with Fisher information, so in some sense, we, we want to still only care about some neighborhood of a given value of phase. So we choose this, uh, this set over which uh, the minimization is performed to be some small neighborhood of this uh, initial value theta zero with plus or minus some small delta. The advantage of such approach is that we do not need to introduce any global or local condition for our for uh, global or local biasness condition for our estimator because it is already done by taking this supremum. And it turns out that if we consider a scenario that uh, there is many repetition of the measurement, uh, indeed uh, for uh, such formulated problem, we get the same results as with using uh, quantum future information and Band. But when we have uh, the situation when total amount of resources is restricted, there are different results. It uh, turned out that uh, in the that with using this minimax approach, we have additionally uh, pi square constant in this bond, and uh, that you, we can. It can be shown show, uh, directly that the impact of size of this uh, initial set we are interested in uh, disappear with increasing n. Uh, what is more, in fact, it can show it can shown that uh, when the number of uh, photons used is very very large, uh, in fact, uh, the problem uh, of this estimation um, does not depend on the size of Theta and it is the same as uh, as if we um, want to estimate completely unknown phase. And the intuition for this may be uh, maybe that uh, if we start with completely unknown things and we have these n photons, so again we can at the beginning use some uh, sublinear part of n, for example squared n, to discriminate this uh, delta size uh, set in which uh, our phase belong and then use the rest to solve the problem and because from the point of view of initial problems this is suboptimal sub way so it can be seen that uh, that at the end for the optimal strategy we need to have the same by square scaling as in estimation of completely unknown phase. <clears throat> and for uh, completely unknown phase, uh, the, everything may be calculated analytically and uh, the optimal states for measuring this, this phase have such uh, sign structure, which is uh, completely different than the known state, which is only two points. Uh, and okay, in fact, for this single phase estimation, everything may, when we may be calculated analytically. But I also I'm sorry, can I ask a, a stupid question? I, I'm working on on this let's say first bound, right? And what if I put delta small kind of artificially smaller than one over n? Then I get something that may not be negligible. It's not clear if it's negligible compared to one, right? Yes. Yes. In fact. Uh, uh, this makes sense only if the uh, number of photons used is much, much bigger than the inverse of the size of this data. Okay, but then, so then the solution, uh, then basically the, so the solution that you are presenting is not valid in the other regime. Because like... The solution is in what sense? Oh, solution, I mean, you say, okay, or the solution, or the bounds. 
right? Because you get some crazy, a bit crazy bounds, right? Like if bounds is very weak, but still valid because then you have that variance is bigger than some negative number, which is obvious. Not so true. Right. So this is what I mean. So like you know, like <laughs> so 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 there is something that must break in the analysis, right? I mean, I know it's mathematically valid, right? But yes. In fact, this is the band, and if this delta is small. Then, of course, uh, if delta is small and also the number of uh, photons is small, then you can say that the problem is not well defined because if the delta, delta is small, then even without performing any measurement, you can just take the estimation, which is have fixed value theta zero, and then your your minimax variance would be theta square. Yeah, sure. Uh, so, but it's this the same problem in the um, okay and in the uh, quantum Fisher information, this problem is omitted by demanding this local unbiasedness, because then you cannot just use the trivial estimation which is constant. But here in the minimax approach or in Bayesian approach, uh, it is clear that by introducing this uh, initial set with some finite uh, size, you assume that you have uh, some uh, a priori knowledge about this parameter. And the case of the estimation makes sense only if you have sufficiently much resources that the information you get from this measurement will be bigger than this a priori information. Sure. Uh, so, okay, I agree that for the situation where this uh, n times theta is small, this does not have much sense. Yeah, this is nitpicking, please go ahead. It's, it's, and in fact, yeah. we consider rather in the situation when the n is uh, big. Okay, so this optimal state uh, in this case may be uh, derived analytically, but still I want to have introduced some approximation, which will be useful later in analyzing the multi-phase case. Uh, so, uh, and the state may be written like this when we have uh, here the number of photons in the lower and upper um, arm of the interferometer. And for the big number, large number of the photons, we can approximate this uh, discrete uh, variable, uh, discrete uh, variable m over n by the uh, continuous one mu. And we would say that we will be performing the minimization over this continuous uh, function, which is which supports it between zero, zero and one. And next, as we argue that, in fact, in the limit of the large number of photons, this problem is independent on the size of uh, size of delta. So it is optimal solution will, should be the same as for the covariant problem where the phase is unknown. So uh, the solution should be obtained by also by covariant measurement. And then we can write exactly that the variance of the estimator is just such integral. Sorry, to, uh, sorry, I need to slow you down, Vortec. Just one, uh, okay, two questions. Uh, so first, like, I, I guess when you write the state as an integral, you 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 make you may make some like you are making some assumption because you restrict the class of states that you have, right? Just like what people did for Bayesian, I guess it has the same flavor for Bayesian phase estimation, right? Uh, in fact, I only assume that this function f have this support between zero and one. But you mentioned continuous. Sorry, I'm like, yeah. Uh, yes. So, you know, like what if the phases are like a bit crazy, right? Like, mm -hmm. The phases coefficients, right? See. So I, I know that the state from the previous slide, this has a sign like envelope, right? So it's like a kind of, it's possible to define this uh, uh, this function, right? But not for every wave function can do it, right? 
just so, yes okay so in this sense i can say that uh, if this step of the proof i allow allow here for more freedom so of course uh, some of this f there are some f functions for which there will be no connection with this uh, this graph sure. No, I just wanted to like it's 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 totally fine, and I guess it's it's the approach that people adapt. But kind of formally, it kind of it's some limitation, right? Yes, yes. Okay, but strictly speaking, here I allow for the broader class of function. So the problem of this minimization with with all uh, all continuous function is easier. But mm -hmm. when I perform it, and it turns out that the solution is just some normal function which can be well approximated by this this conversion. Okay, uh, just a second, maybe okay. Comment because not everybody is. Fam can you comment on this covariant measurement? Because okay, I know that some people are familiar with it, but uh, some not. Like so, you put here. I get. Like, can you comment on this? Like, what? You okay, so uh, yeah. in general, the idea of covariant measurement is that uh, when whole problem is uh, in fact. Uh, acting of some group of our of the initial state uh, so uh, we can uh, we can uh, we can also use this fact in choosing the measurement you want to perform and in fact if the problem is uh, such formulated we can uh, formulate our measurement also as this projection on some uh, fixed uh, state and we act on this of this group on this uh, measurement. So as we can say that uh, this uh, phase in printing is that rotation of our state. So we also construct the measurement as some fixed projection and next rotate this projection. I think it's uh, sure. And what you wrote here is uh, so the the. The, the effect of a measurement would be proportional to a pure state that you just wrote. Sure. Yes. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, so now we can write everything down precisely. So here we have the probability of uh, having the result th uh, theta tilde when the true value is uh, theta, and here we have difference between true value and the estimate of square. And now we can see that acting of this, uh, uh, this measurement is in fact uh, equivalent to performing the Fourier transform of this, uh, of this uh, function f uh, when this uh, factor n comes uh, before the integral. And so now, now, okay, so we have the integral over square of Fourier transform the times square of this estimator. So after performing inverse Fourier transform, we have just the minus second uh, derivative acting on this state. So the problem is uh, mathematically equivalent to the finding the grand state of free particle in infinite potential well. And the solution for this problem is known to be the sine function. So it's the same uh, we have before by strictly calculating everything strictly. Uh, okay, and in general, these all these uh, results may be uh, generalized for the arbitrary quantum gates with of the form. Uh, unknown variable times some arbitrary generator. And we have also uh, considered more general uh, meteorological protocol when instead of using some parallel states of n photons or atoms or anything, we just act sequentially, sequentially by uh, our quantum gate and there are some unitary control operator between. 
And it can be shown that all this complicated stuff cannot help and uh, cannot allow to beat this uh, pi corrected Heisenberg limit. So finally, we can show that uh, for the single parameter case, this result is universal. And when co compared to the, this noon state and uh, things obtained by using Kramer row band, we have a additional pi square correction. Uh, okay, so now um, we can still wonder if there is uh, some more uh, visible connection between this noon state, which was, which was locally optimal, and this sign state, <coughs> which is globally optimal, and uh, this, uh, pi cor this uh, pi square correction. So uh, one idea to use some sequence of noon states in a more reasonable way is to divide our uh, all photons between some small parts and then use the sequence of, in this sense, moon state, when each of them, after measuring, uh, give us the information about uh, this value of this uh, unknown phase, but in, in a different uh, size of region. And everything may be <coughs> optimi optimized uh, numerically. And it turns out that, that if one uh, use such sequence of moon state in optimal way, again, he obtained this uh, pi square correction. So it's very consistent. And in fact, in a, this, uh, this understanding, it was also done uh, experimentally. And also these results were relatively close to this uh, fundamental band. OK, so to sum up uh, about the, um, OK. Uh, I should uh, end at uh, four or where? When? Um, let's say quarter, around quarter past four. Okay, so I think it will be uh, enough. So to sum up in a single phase estimation, we see that if we use our probe independently, then we have just a short noise limit. One, while when we, when we uh, use entangled probes, if we consider the situation when the number of repetitions is arbitrarily large, then we have just one over number of repetition times square of uh, photons used in a single trial. While when uh, the amount of photons is total, um, total photons is restricted, we have this pi square correction. Okay, so now we uh, want to come back to our problem of uh, multi phase estimation and answer the question, what is the advantage of measuring and, and them jointly instead of separately? Uh, so it is clear that in the case we, when we measure them separately, if we consider the situation when the number of trials is very, very big, use quantity share information formalism, and the total cost, say like number of phases, uh, we want to measure uh, inverse of the number of repetition for each of them and the inverse of uh, Tisha information. So at least at uh, last we have P-square uh, scale, uh, scaling. While in the situation when the total number of photons is constrained, we need to divide uh, between these uh, phases this number of uh, photons used for each of them. So we have this uh, PQ scaling. And <clears throat> uh, now, now we want to compare it with the results obtainable by joint measurement. So uh, in the main repetition scenario, we use Kramer raw band. So we define the quantity share information matrix. And uh, for each of phases, we have this band uh, by the diagonal element of inverse of this matrix. OK, and it's technical and not so very important. Uh, what is uh, 
crucial intuition here is that uh, these uh, inverses of uh, quantum information matrix, matrix are proportional to the inverse of the variance of the atom in the sensing arm. So, in fact, to have uh, optimal uh, value of future information, we want to choose some state for which uh, the variance of, uh, of the atoms in each sensing arm is the biggest possible. So, we can apply some generalization of noon state, which is the equal superposition of the photons in each arm. And then each variance is uh, n square over p. So we see that uh, from, from what this advantage comes, because uh, we don't need to divide the number of um, this. Why this variance stays quadratically with n, it's only stays linearly with p. So at the end, we have the, this uh, p squared scaling. And if it will be calculated uh, directly, then it turns out that the solution is uh, similar, but it is more efficient to put uh, a bit more uh, photons to the reference arm and uh, a bit small to the sensing arm. And at the end, we have uh, additionally this four, four factor. Uh, okay. And if we, when we, I, Vortec, I wanted to understand what you just did to say technically, because in the very beginning you showed us, um, let's say, okay, you are giving some like some sketches that if we had, uh, let's say, maximal official information or close to like for every phase, then we can expect this much. Let's say in terms of like like some of variances, also, right? Initially, like before the discussion of the uh, like uh, pi corrected Heisenberg scale, right? Yes. So what you did now is you just uh, told us how to formally optimize uh, over states or. Because I don't see otherwise the difference between just in the very beginning of your talk, you were yes. the same scale. And then I just put, said that there is some uh, quantum fisher information and there are some results. And here I just want to. Okay, I have no much time, so I plan to. No, don't be, okay, don't be stressed. Like, yeah. we, that, like sometimes it can, we can, it's better like to, okay, we can. Extend for like five minutes or something. Just uh, okay. So yes, so if, I understand why you just here is yeah. here is the same stuff which was given at the very beginning, but there is some more technical aspects because uh, in general, in multi-parameter case, some additional problem may arise with using quantum transformation. Mm -hmm. For example, there can appear different problems with uh, saturability because in general it may happen that different parameters for different parameters there are different optimal measurements and mm -hmm. as the result in general the quantum Kramer band may be not saturable even if the limit of non-repetition in this case but in the situation we discuss here which is this multi phases problem when uh, all the generators commute, there is no, uh, no gotcha. problem. With it. So, uh, in general, we need to care about uh, that, but in our case, does not generate any problem. Sure. So, generically, if those uh, generators commute, there is no pro problem with saturability of this multi parameter camera yes. band. Yes, it is with unitary estimation and generator commutes, everything is fine. So what is, uh, okay, so uh, at the end we have this result. While in this uh, multi, in this uh, minimax approach, uh, later I will give some more technical uh, details, but the main difference between the Fisher approach is that in this case, 
the variance of each uh, parameter stays uh, inversely with the square of the of the mean number of photons in this arm and not with variance. And when when where there is only a case with variance, we can have this trick, which gives us situation when uh, this variance stays only in R limit p, while we are talking about the a square of the mean, there is no option because we need to divide these photons between this arm. So the mean stays uh, like n over p. So the square of the of this mean have this additional p. So in general, it is clear that this scaling p cube cannot be um, overcome. Uh, okay, and to have the exact uh, the solution we have applied the similar uh, approach as in this uh, in single phase estimation. So then it was at the end we have this uh, part. Uh, the problem was equivalent to finding the ground state of the particle in infinite well. So here we have some p-dimensional particle with some. Uh, infinite potential but the shape of this trap is some simplex close to the origin uh, of the axis and in general it is hard to be solved but we can also apply the weaker condition so instead of uh, uh, solving this problem we just say that okay so if totally we have an and, uh, and photons, and we assume that the solution must be symmetric for replacing uh, these uh, phases. So, in the mean value of photons in each sensing arm, and to be smaller or equal than n over p. And uh, then, using similar method, we can again uh, map this problem to solving the. So finding the ground state of free particle and in this case this is the particle in the linear potential so the solution is the array function uh, and at the end of the day we have that uh, it can be bounded by uh, one over uh, eight nine times this p cube over n square okay but this is this is also the lower bound but we have also the, found the exemplary state uh, for which uh, this uh, constant was two, but we are not sure if it is optimal. So we know that the optimal value is something between uh, these two. Okay, so to summary, uh, we can see that the scaling with the number of p depends on the scenario we choose to analyze if the arbitrary number of repetition is allowed there the cost stays quadratically with p while in, when the, mm, the num total number of photons is restricted it scales uh, like uh, the third power but we see that within any paradigm uh, the advantage from measuring the faces jointly is relatively similar and it's something around uh, five or four times smaller in case of measuring them jointly. Okay, and at last one can ask uh, if this uh, result is <laughs> universal and uh, if it uh, holds in arbitrary metrology model and it turns out that uh, it's not. For example, we can consider the more complicated problem of <coughs> estimating the free component of magnetic field when the generator do not, does not commute. Uh, and then it turns out that if we consider only the parallel strategy, so there is no any adaptiveness uh, inside, we just consider some uh, big entangled space of n atoms to sense this magnetic field. Uh, then in the case when there is many repetition, in fact, there is no mm, advantage in measuring uh, this component jointly. While in the 
situation when the total number, total amount of resources is restricted, uh, this advantage is really, really high. So to summarize, we see that uh, in the in general case, Fisher uh, information cannot give us the, the solution and the answer when and what is the advantage of measuring something jointly if truly total amount of resources is restricted. Okay, and I think that would be all. Uh, many thanks, Wojtek, for the nice talk. Uh, we have time for questions and comments to the speaker. I know it's Su 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 Susanna. There was then. Susanna, did you want to ask a question? Then please, yeah. You're muted. Yeah, no, I, I just applaud. <laughs> okay. Ah, okay, so no questions from you. Uh, okay, I, I have uh, one general question. So, um, okay, I very much like your results, although, I'm not although, like, I wonder what is the suitable toolbox uh, that metrology can use for somehow, uh, like slightly twisted setting because you guys, okay, you, Alpha, and many others, they seem to be, you, you seem to be concerned in, okay, here in the situation when the number of uh, phases or parameters you want to estimate are, they are fixed compared to the resources that you can spend, right? Um, and you consider those like as, uh, yeah. While in okay, like recently uh, there is this uh, popular technique called uh, classical shadows. Uh, when people okay, people use it to estimate actually many, even formally exponentially many properties of a quantum system, right? Using like polynomially many queries to it, uh, right? So it's like a different regime. So like imagine having. Uh, number of queries which is much smaller than the number of phases right uh so like uh is it i know is it interesting to analyze some scenario like this in the meteorology context or um what would be the because i guess we should, like those tools that you are using are not suitable to to cover such scenarios I'm not sure what what was main aspect of this question. <clears throat> my, 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 uh, okay, my let's say main aspect of the question was what if the number of resources is much smaller than the number of phases? Let's say okay, to, number of resources. I gave the context, but yeah. Okay, I think it's of course uh, valid to analyze. But I think it's almost orthogonal to the things what sure, sure. here. Fair enough. Yeah. Okay, but you can we want to consider the situation when there is also even no many repetition. To, to be honest, I I don't see an efficient way to to solve the problem in such case when because even for one parameter to get Good precision you need to no no okay so you have some of course you want to have right but it's not that you go maybe it's a bit different setting because you don't go to asymptotic limit let's say so of course you need to invest let's say to estimate uh of course roughly speaking you need to uh, to have precision precision epsilon you have to invest either one over epsilon square, uh, squared resources or one over epsilon in the Heisenberg limit, right? So of course this I take for granted, but now imagine that I want to estimate let's say exponentially many or like P, which is much larger than like the number of uh, repetitions, right? So in the, uh, let's say individually, I would have enough precision, right? To, uh, to estimate uh, like each of them. 
right? But I want to do it simultaneously. Okay, but uh, then your cost is the sum of variances, or ah, that's a good. Uh, because if you no, okay, in this case, like I want to parameter, it is impossible to. Because if you still want to know the value of exactly each of these parameters, sure. Maybe you yeah, have okay, okay. So, so that, okay. So the, I, this goes I, that you assume that also there are some correlation between these parameters. Mm -hmm. And then it can be, of course, uh, of course, used. Okay, so then I think it should be rather than within Bayesian. Uh, Bayesian approach, because it seems to me that to make this uh, problem reasonable, we need to assume that there is some uh, note from the priori correlation between these uh, very number of parameters. Right. So you know, just just a okay. This is maybe just high level comment. So in those works, okay, that I have in mind, this shadow estimation uh, technology. So you. Like the scenario is more like the following. So you have like exponentially many properties of your uh, system or plenty of properties of your system. But a priori, you don't know which property you are interested in. You just want to have experiment that will be, let's say that in case you want to estimate, it would allow you to estimate, okay? Uh, and then you might be more interested in saying, okay, what is the probability that, you know, like you might be interested in simultaneous uh, confidence intervals of those, of your estimators, okay? Uh, things like this, as opposed to, so, you know, what if I pay, uh, take, okay, it's a bit different setting, but I, I think, okay, uh, it's some, um, interesting trend in estimation, quantum estimation theory, I just wanted to point out. Uh, yeah. Okay, sorry, because it's more like statements from me than, sorry, Wojtek. Please, guys, do you have comments or questions? Yeah. All right, so, okay, my, okay, one, okay, just question about your thing, Wojtek. So you gave this analysis uh, when you reduce the problem to, uh, finding the ground state of, of a free particle in like p-dimensional simplex, mm -hmm. right? So if you can go back, because can go back to the slides, just even okay. I started before, started before, just before this analysis, uh, like here. So uh, you said, okay, that just if you can expand just this part. <laughs> okay, no, yeah, here. So my question, uh, okay, question is, so basically you can already, like if I trust those equations, I can already sort of, uh, I want to understand the, like to what extent this rigorous analysis that you gave was needed, like if you cared about the constant only or you cared about the scaling. Uh, okay, I think this uh, rigorous uh, part was needed to show formally that this uh, variance truly scales like one over the square of mean number of atoms. Because it is not uh, clear from the beginning, because for I example, see. the Fisher information may be arbitrary bit for the fixed mean, uh, mean number. I see, so this is the intuition. Okay, so that, you know, because my question was along the way, okay, if this is true, maybe then you can give some bound on the sum of variances with maybe a bit worse constant. Yeah, so mm -hmm. it, maybe it would be more pedagogical uh, to first take this and say, okay, from this, we know that the, the variance is limited by the mean value, and then we can uh, perform this design. Okay. Cool. Uh, thanks for clarification, guys. Last chance to ask something to Wojtek. Okay. If not, uh, let's thank the speaker again for a nice talk. And uh, yeah, see you like all next week. <laughs>